There are 30 teams in the NBA, 15 in the East and 15 in the West. Each year, they all gather together and compete for the Larry O'Brien Trophy to see who's the best in the world. Various awards are then given out to see who's the best player in the league, who's the best player in the finals, and so on and so forth. However, have you ever pondered the question of, who's the best player from each and every team? It might seem obvious, but the truth is, many NBA legends are now heading into the latter stages of their career, while many young players are embarking on their journey to stamp their name into the history books. Just who is the top dog from every organization in the highest tiered basketball league in the world? Well, today, we're about to find out. Let's start off with the Milwaukee Bucks, and this one is a no-brainer. Standing seven feet and built like a freight train, Giannis is currently the most physically dominant player in the league. I mean, have you ever seen a player who's able to dunk the ball from the half-court line with just one dribble? He's a two-time MVP, finals MVP, champion, defensive player of the year, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. So what? Uh, case closed. He's the best Bucks player. Next off, we have the Boston Celtics. This one is a no-brainer too. Jason Tatum is currently the best Celtics player, and he's currently the leading scorer for Game 7s in NBA history after his 51-point performance against the Philadelphia 76ers. Some may say he's a choker, some may say he's a faker, but it's absolutely basketball blasphemy at this point to not put him as the Celtics' best player. I mean, I know there's Jalen Brown, but he's currently 1B to Tatum's 1A. Next off, we have the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, despite his meltdown in the playoffs, I'll still have to give this one to Joel Embiid. He led the league in scoring during the regular season with 33 points and was the regular season MVP. He's a force of nature, and his only weakness is the playoffs. <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, it's true. When the temperature gets hot, he melts. But if he could get over this mental hurdle and stay healthy, he could quite possibly become the most dominant player in the league. As of the moment, the best player in Philly is still the process. The Cavaliers are up next. So back in the LeBron era, this would be easy, but now it's become just a bit harder. Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland? The Spida or the Boog? They're both six foot one guards who can score the ball and dish out a dime. During the regular season, Mitchell had slightly better statistics, but in the playoffs, Garland had slightly better statistics. Honestly, it's almost potato, potato at this point, but because of a 71 game performance, I'll have to say Mitchell is 1A to Garland's 1B at this point. The New York Knicks are up next, and this is an easy one. I'm going with Jalen Brunson over Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. It might sound like basketball blasphemy since Randall was an all-star and an all-NBA selection, but come on. In the playoffs, when all the marbles were on the line, Brunson averaged 27.8 points with an effective field goal percentage of 54, whereas Randall averaged a measly 16.6 .6 points with an EFG of 43. <laughs> To make things worse, this is the second time Randall made the playoffs, and in his first stint, he stunk just as bad. It's Brunson for the Knicks, and with that being said, the Brooklyn Nets are up next. I know Ben Simmons is still on the team, but this'll have to go to Mikel Bridges. I mean, did you know that while Ben Simmons played just 42 games this season, Mikel Bridges played 83? Yeah, it's true. One player is known for missing games, using every excuse under the sun, while the other exceeded the maximum limit of 82 games in a season because of a mid-season trade. Bridges is also one of the best two-way players in the game today, and I'm going to have to put him as the Nets' best player. The Atlanta Hawks are up next, and this is a pretty tough one. Trey Young is nearly a 30-point, 10-assist type of guy when he's at the top of his game, while DeJounte Murray is a 20-point triple-double threat type of player who's slightly more efficient with the Rock and who could also play defense. A case could be made for Murray as the best Hawks player, but 
because Ice Trey is the face of the franchise, often draws the opposing team's best defender, and single-handedly broke the process a few years back, I'm going to have to go with him as the best player for the Hawks. The Miami Heat are up next, and this is an easy one. Hemi Butler, Jimmy Buckets, Playoff Jimmy, Tatum's father, Jordan's long-lost son, whatever you want to call him, the truth is Jimmy Butler is currently the best player on the Miami Heat team. And uh, even if Damian Lillard gets traded to the Heat, I'm still going to have to go with Butler. This man single-handedly got his team into the NBA Finals twice with a bunch of undrafted players. He's also the reigning Eastern Conference Finals MVP, and nothing under the sun will convince me that he isn't the best player in Miami. And with that being said, the Raptors are up next. And their best player is Pascal Siakam. It's not even a debate at this point, but... I will say that OG Ananobi is probably the more valuable trade asset they have because he's an elite 3 and D type of player who works better alongside other superstars. But if you had to pick a Batman, it'd be Siakam. The Chicago Bulls are up next. Honestly, it's a toss up between Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. They both have similar stats, both play roughly the same positions, and they're both killers. For 2024 though, I'm going to have to go with Zach Levine, simply because he'll be in his prime at 28 years of age, while DeRozan will be 34 years of age, and will probably decline slightly. But again, these two are simultaneously both Batmans and both Robins, but if you ask me, I'm going to have to go with Levine going forward. The Pacers are up next, and for them, it's an obvious one. Tyrese Halliburton is a 20-point, 10-assist maestro who averages nearly 50, 40, and 90, is the face of the franchise, and, uh, case closed, guys. The Washington Wizards are up next, and their current best player is the pool party. While I don't think they're going to do well as a team, I do look forward to Jordan Poole putting on a show in 2024, and I expect him to average at least 25 points. He's trained under Steph Curry for four straight years, and although he had an off year in 2023, I see him going on somewhat of a revenge season next year, and I have him as the Wizards' best player. When it comes to the Orlando Magic, Paulo Boncaro is clearly their number one option. I mean, 6'10", could shoot the three ball, could shoot the mid-range, and could bully his way to the basket? He's a beast of a beast is the reigning rookie of the year and is currently the best player in Orlando. With the Hornets, it's got to be LaMelo Ball. He's a 6 foot 7 point guard who's a triple double threat. One of his main weaknesses coming into the league was his three point efficiency, but he clearly worked on it and is now just a bit shy of the coveted 40% mark. He's the face of the Hornets and is the one bright spot in Michael Jordan's ownership history. When it comes to the Pistons, so, uh, although Cade Cunningham is the future of the franchise, if I had to say who their best player is in 2024, I'm going to have to go with Boyan Bogdanovich. Cade is just too young and inexperienced at this point. I mean, he missed practically the entire 2023 season with an injury and will need perhaps another year to develop his game before he can become their best player. So with that being said, let's finally move over to the Western Conference, and I'm going to start off with the Denver Nuggets. So like we all know, this one is a no-brainer. Although Jamal Murray is a star in his own right, the Nuggets' best player is Nikola Jokic. He's a two-time MVP, finals MVP, champion, and has been putting up some unheard of numbers over the last few years. During their 2023 championship run, no team and no body was able to figure him out, and not only is he the best Nuggets player currently, he's the best Nuggets player in franchise history. The Memphis Grizzlies are up next, and while everyone may put up Ja Morant as their best player, I'm going to have to give this one to Desmond Bain for 2024. I mean, first off, Ja is already going to miss a third of their season with his 25-game suspension, and next off, Bain is a three-level scoring threat who's also the far more efficient scorer, and I only see him getting better and better. 
If Ja could develop a consistent three-point shot of around 35% or better, he'll easily be their best player. But the lack of a three-pointer really hurts his offense, and because of that, I'm going to have to go with Bain. Next off, we have the Sacramento Kings, and this one is a tough one. On the one hand, we have De'Aaron Fox, who's the fastest guard in the league today and who, under Mike Brown's system, turned into a superstar during the playoffs. And on the other hand, we have DeMontis Ankle Lovin' Sabonis, who is a poor man's Jokic. It's a close one between these two guys, but because Fox elevated his game in the postseason and because Sabonis' performance decreased, I'm going to have to give this one to Fox. The Phoenix Suns are up next, and uh, I might get a lot of objections for this one, but for 2024, I'm going to say their best player is Devin Booker. Kevin Durant will be turning 35 next season, has a history of injuries, and in their most recent playoffs against both the Clippers and the Nuggets, Booker was the far better scorer, and since neither of them are really known for their defense, we can only really judge them for offense, right? In 2024, for the first time in like over a decade, and perhaps in his entire career, Kevin Durant won't be the best player on his team. That honor will go to Devin Booker. The Los Angeles Clippers are up next, and although I hate giving this to Kawhi Leonard because of his limited, limited availability, the Claw is the Clippers' best player. Paul George even stated on his podcast that he's okay with being Robin while Kawhi is Batman. I will say, however, that based on availability, Russell Westbrook may be their most impactful player in 2024, but when it comes to their best player, that honor goes to Kawhi, the load-managing but always injured Leonard. <laughs> the Golden State Warriors are up next, and y'all already know who the best player on this team is. Four-time champion, two-time MVP, one-time finals MVP, best shooter in NBA history, the best warrior in 2024, and in franchise history is none other than Stephen Curry. Even if Chris Paul were in his prime, I'd still go with Curry. Even if a prime Wilt Chamberlain somehow traveled across time and played in 2024, it'd still be Curry. The 6'3 guard out of Davison continues to single-handedly put not just the team, but the organization on his back. And without him, there would not have been a dynasty. People always talk about the warrior system, and although many have tried mimicking it, the reason why they failed is because they don't have Steph Curry. He's the only reason why their system works, and because of that, and many other reasons, I got him as the best warrior in history. The Lakers are up next. Honestly, the answer should embarrass every member of the Lakers roster, especially Anthony Davis, because how are they going to let a 39-year-old be their best player? Yeah, that's right. Despite him always crying to the refs and always flopping, you can't deny that he's still numero uno when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers. Without him, that team would be a complete embarrassment, but because of him, they're actually a championship contender. In fact, if he didn't showboat and miss a wide-open dunk in, I think, Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals against the Nuggets, that series would have arguably been a lot more interesting. Oh, and by the way, after he blew that open dunk, I heard him say to the refs, Where's the foul? <laughs> okay, so I'm kidding, but I bet he wanted to. Anyway, next up are the Minnesota Timberwolves, and I'm going to have to go with Anthony Edwards on this one. Carl Anthony Towns is a seven-foot unicorn that could be their best player, but he just doesn't have that mental psyche to win at the highest level. Whereas Anthony Edwards has the Mamba mentality and raises his game when the lights are at their brightest. The Oklahoma City Thunder are up next, and this is an easy one. Shea Gilgis Alexander, right? I mean, this isn't even a debate. So instead, I'll just move on to the next team. The Pelicans. So, uh, I think we're all in the same boat for this one. It'd be Zion Williamson, except he's always injured. So, maybe Brandon Ingram? <sighs> I'd love to give it to Ingram. 
And although he may be their most impactful player based on skills and availability, the truth is the Pelicans are only a true threat when Zion is in the lineup. So just like the issue with Kawhi Leonard, I'm going to have to give the best player award for the Pelicans to Zion. I'm always injured, Williamson. The Mavericks are up next, and this is obviously a two-man race. So, because Kyrie hit that finals game-winning shot back in 2016 and is a champion, he's obviously the more accomplished player, but since we're talking about the best player in 2024, I'm going to have to give this one to Luka. Six foot seven, could play bully ball, could shoot the three, could shoot the mid-range, Devin Booker's father. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Luka on this one all day. The Utah Jazz are up next, and again, this is an obvious one. The seven-foot all-star from Finland who just averaged 25 and 9 while shooting just a hair shy of 50, 40, and 90. It's Lowry Markinen, and it's not even close, guys. The Trailblazers are up next, and uh, this is probably the hardest team to decide who the best player is. I mean, Assuming Damian Lillard gets traded, which he probably will be, we have a race between Anthony Simmons, Jeremy Grant, and Yusef Nurkic. And then we also have the generational talent of Scoot Henderson entering the conversation as well. So, about this one. It might be basketball blasphemy to put a rookie ahead of NBA players with years of experience, especially when they're good players as well. But. I'm going to hand this one to Scoot Henderson based on a combination of athleticism, skills, and the leadership he displayed during his days in Ignite. He might not start off as their best player in 2024, but give it a few months, and I see him absolutely just taking off. It's also important to note that he just finished a year playing professionally, and that he's not just a college student playing in the pros for the first time in his career. And with that being said, we got the Houston Rockets up next. This one is an obvious one. With Fred Van Vliet traded over, he's now their best player. The younger players all have a higher ceiling, and perhaps by 2025, they'll all surpass Van Vliet, but for the 2024 season, the undrafted guard from Illinois is the Rockets' top dog. And last off, we have the San Antonio Spurs. So, uh, when Tim Duncan and David Robinson, two other seven-footers who were once upon a time drafted by the Spurs, entered the league, they were instant all-stars and were also instantly selected to the all-NBA teams. I know times have changed, and I ain't saying that Wambanyama will make the all-star team or all-NBA team or anything like that, but he'll be the focal point of the Spurs offense going forward for the next decade or two, and I got him as the best Spurs for 2024. So with all this being said, let me know your thoughts. Did I get them right, or did I get some of them wrong? Let me know in the comments down below if you disagreed with some of my takes, then click on this video right here.